All right, joining us this morning on our Ford Zoom call with the media is driver of the number 17 Fast and All Ford Mustang, Chris Busher, coming off his first career pole at Dover and uh, an eighth place finish in Sunday's race. If you've got a question for Chris, raise your hand and we'll have Chris for the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Chris, thanks for joining us. We're going to get you started here with Rob Tiongson. Rob, go ahead and get started. Thanks, Dan, and thanks for joining us, Chris. I'll start off with a couple of questions for you. Now, obviously, Dover was a really great race weekend for you and the number 17 team. So from a confidence standpoint, how great was it to get that performance out there and showcase what you and your team can do uh, when all the cards are on your table? I think, um, you know, for us, we've had some good momentum through the season. Uh, we've been building up steadily, but uh, probably a little bit slower than what we would like. And um, that was definitely a, a bigger step to to have that speed off the truck which is something that we feel like we've been chasing a little bit uh you know it's become very important with such a, a limited amount of practice and then qualifying uh, has become very important as well with some of these races that um have been a, a surprisingly amount of, of track position sensitive so uh definitely a, a pretty awesome weekend for us uh didn't get the win that uh, that we really need to, to really swing that momentum over but uh, very good progress, nonetheless. It was um, it was a good race for us. Uh, mostly, mostly clean through the day and, and kept out of some of the chaos. And um, you know, wish uh, we could have gotten a few more spots there uh, towards uh, towards the end. And, and ultimately, wanted to be racing for a win. Just um, for just a, a few really small tweaks away from being able to do that. Absolutely. My last question for you is: you know, obviously, you and uh, co-owner and teammate Brad Keselowski it seems like you guys are just making some great strides but what's the chemistry been like between the two of you with trying to get RFK racing back to the front of the field it's it's been really good um it's been really neat to see Brad come in uh and obviously have uh, a little bit more skin in the game than than most of your uh, your typical teammates would um it's been fun to learn from him I, I think that a lot of Brad's experience from from his truck team from his his advanced manufacturing company that that he is operating uh, I think a lot of that's coming into play as he's come over to, to RFK and uh, applied some of that I think that it's been neat to see um, him and Jack work uh, so well together I think that uh, they have a, a ton of similarities uh, the more I'm around them uh, start to see a lot of each other uh, in both of them so that's that's been neat to see it it's been working out really well uh, been able to lean on Brad for, you know, I, I think back to specific cases where uh, tracks that have not been my best through the years. And, and I go back to, to Phoenix and a track that Brad's had a lot of success at and uh, went down there, tested, was able to to lean on Brad for a lot of it, advice and, and what he's looking for and what he's been successful with there at Phoenix in the past and, um, you know, was able to, to apply that and then come on with a, I think a 10th place run there at the beginning of the year. That, that was just one of the first cases where like, man, this is going to, going to end up being really helpful for me. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rob. I want to go to Bob next. I know he's outside. So just in case, uh, something happens here, uh, let, let's go to Bob and, uh, we'll continue after that. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Chris, uh, I'm curious with the all-star race being in Texas, do you, uh, you know, there, there'll be a lot of talk of should it remain in Texas, should it not remain in Texas? What do you think, um, I guess, what, what what's kind of your opinion on that? Do you feel like the all-star race should move around? And is there anything that you feel like maybe Texas either, I want to say that the track can do, but what, what can be done to maybe make things maybe a little bit more exciting for Texas? Um. You know, in my opinion, the, the all-star race should move around. Uh, I know that hasn't been how it is has been through the years, um, and it's not the, the history of it. But if you want to call it an all-star, uh, I think you need to give give an opportunity to, to different drivers um, who have different skill sets for different racetracks. Um, you know, at some point, it should probably go to a road course. Uh, I don't think it should go – to dirt, um, you know, if we're gonna uh, try and try and make sure we're keeping to the to the asphalt routes with everybody, but we do enough road racing now that uh, maybe that's an opportunity in the future. But I don't think that's the the first place we should be switching it over to. I think there's a lot of different racetracks. Uh, you know, we, we've given it a, a few different 
shots here. Um, you know, if you think uh, I got asked this question not too long ago or something similar, and, and the the first thing that came to mind is if we we took the All Star and went to Phoenix every year, uh, we'd all be really worried about Kevin Harvick winning every race, every All Star, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's probably not the best indication of uh, you know for an All Star race if you're trying to make it exciting and uh, make it about you know, who can, who can get it done for, uh, for a heads up and nothing on the line race. Well, it's still going to play into to strong suits for different drivers, for different teams at different racetracks. So I, I'm, I'm a proponent for, for moving it around a little bit. I don't know that that needs to be every year. I don't know if it needs to be every two or three. I, I, I don't have those answers, but yeah, I could see it moving around and see that being a benefit and keeping it, keeping it fresh as we keep going through it. Um, you know, asking about, Texas specifically and, and what they can do. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there's anything that, that needs to be done or can be done. Um, you know, the, the race can be good there. It's uh, a little bit dependent on track conditions. I know we've uh, messed around with, with PJ one, we've, uh, you know, tried to, to see if we can make that work. I don't know with, uh, with this car, how, uh, how it's really been, been received as, um, as a good option or not. But, um, you know, I think that that's something that we got to keep in mind that there are small options. Um, but at the end of the day, I just think that if we move it around some, it'll keep it, keep it fresh and keep it exciting. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Bob. Let's stay in Texas. Let's go to job Stur- John Sturbin. Go ahead, Sturb. Chris, good morning. How are you? Doing good. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you this for the uh, Dallas Morning News. Uh, after you qualified on pole at Dover, you said that you typically don't put much emphasis on qualifying. Um, do you think now that you led 18 laps and you scored points in two stages, finished eighth, you might want to rethink that and, and get more aggressive right out of the box? Um, yeah, I guess um, to be more clear or elaborate a little bit on that statement it's not that we don't focus on on qualifying um because you're right it is very important and you know this this weekend showed that there's been several that have um but i don't know that uh you know it's just specifically about sitting on a pole um because there's been a lot of weeks where through through my career that sat on the pole and been like man this is great for one lap but we got a lot to work on for our race car um and then there's been the opposite. There's been weeks where I've had a really good race car and not worried about the qualifying side of it. So um, there's there's a balance. Um, qualifying is very important and um, and very much so until we learn how to uh, make this car less aero dependent from a from a team standpoint. If, um, if that's something we can we can accomplish, but it is a, a big part of what we're racing. Um, I, I guess if uh, if you're going to the track to be the fastest. For, uh, from lap one of practice through qualifying through the race, um, that does need to be the goal. But I don't think that the emphasis needs to be sitting on the pole every weekend. Um, you know, we're going to give it all we got, but good race cars and, and everything we can do to win a race. And uh, I think we had a good balance of that this week. We had a really good race car, um, a really good qualifying car. Uh, but know some things now that may would give up a little bit of qualifying speed for some race speed that we would go back in and we would put in the car at the at the expense of of maybe a few positions for qualifying i have a follow-up um do you feel that you and scott graves are now kind of recapturing the magic or the chemistry or whatever it was from 2015 or is that just too too long ago to to even count anymore no it definitely it's worth something uh you know we've been able to get back in a swing of things and uh both of us have a whole lot more experience now than we we did at that point um but a lot of the the same characteristics and same uh nuances with uh with each other are still there um you know a lot of the same positives are are there that we're able to to work around and and, and understand each other quickly uh neither of us are very um uh i guess if, if you want to say excitable or really high emotion people uh, but I think that we can communicate very quickly and, and clearly because of that. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a certain amount of it that, that is definitely coming into play and it's definitely starting to uh, to click here as we, we get into the first third of the season. Um, I think it's going to continue to get stronger as uh, as we all work 
uh, as a, an entire team together and, and as the entire group is getting more comfortable with each other and figuring out what everyone needs and um, and what we can all accomplish together. So, yeah, there, there's definitely um, – there's something to it, and uh, we're going to keep building on it to make sure there's there's more of it as we keep going. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Appreciate you joining today. Let's go to Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Chris. So, um, so Saturday, uh, during your, your Fox Sports interview after you got the poll, it kind of seemed to me, to me like you were maybe a little bit emotional over having just gotten the poll. I don't know if, it, if that was the case or not. Um, uh, if it was, why, why was it it's a special moment for you? And what was it like for you, you know, waiting for all the cars to make their runs and take you down? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, you know, so some pretty awesome uh, emotion from it uh, is a definitely a, a cool feeling. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of wild to think, but it, I haven't actually had a, a NASCAR pole across any of the series um, unless you go back to, uh, to I guess, now that the ARCA series. Um, you know, so it, it was it was very neat. It was it was cool to go out there and put a lap down. We were, what, the fourth one on track? Uh, in our group, fourth car to qualify at all. And uh, so we waited around for a really long time and realized right then that our lap was going to hold up uh, pretty good. I um, I stayed in the car because I, I was too nervous to uh, to do anything different. I was like, well, that, that put up a good lap. I'll stay in the car and we'll see how the rest of the field goes. And uh, if, if need be, I'll get out and we can go back to the hauler. But I uh, ended up staying in it through both groups and uh, right up to our, our next lap. And um, we were the second car to go out uh, for the final round and uh, felt pretty good about the lab. Had a little bit of a, of a lift over in three and four that I thought might might cost us. And I knew we had some uh, some fast cars that went and made only one lap and uh, and put down really good speed. So uh, there was the thought in in our team's mind that they have fresher tires. They save something for this round, too. Um I don't know that we were uh, real nervous. We were watching, uh, you know, paying attention, but uh, didn't even um, – didn't turn SMT on. We were sitting there talking about that. If we had SMT and we were sitting there watching, I don't know if that would made the nerves better or worse. Uh, if you're sitting there and knew that you had them off of two, but they gained into three and see if you could get them off of four, it was it was a little easier for us just to watch the monitor up top and see them come across the line and uh, and, and, and watch the time. So, um you know, it kind of took that split second to react once it was all over. It's like, we are good, right? That, that was that was it. So uh, definitely a cool one. It was um, hopefully the, the first of, of many through the season. Uh, I think that as we, we learn what we need, we have a lot of good things to build off from the Dover weekend, uh, qualifying related, race related, uh, race car related. There's a lot of positives from it. So it was, it was definitely special. It, it's cool to get that, that poll. It was cool to run well all day. Um, wanted to run a little better, and, and I think we have some good ideas on how to uh, to balance it out for that single single lap speed versus long run speed. Now, all right, and this this is your eighth year in the Cup Series, and being an established you know Xfinity champion, a winner, you, you know you're a capable driver. What's been the hardest part for you over the last like eight years, not being able to consistently remind people with your on-track performance that you are as good as you are. Yeah, I guess um, I'm hoping I'm, I'm right in saying seven years, right? Well, you, you made you made made like six starts eight years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I was like, because I've been telling a lot of people that it's the seventh year this this season, so I want to make sure I haven't been lying to a whole bunch of people. But, um, yeah, you know, I think, um, I think through – through through my career, my cup career more specifically, we, we had a lot of success in ARCA pretty quick and Xfinity pretty quick. Um, and then, you know, when the, the, the cup season came around after the championship, um, you know, it was uh, kind of a, a wild, silly season for us. And uh, thinking that I was going into a cup car at Roush and through some downsizing, ended up going over to uh, to front row and getting a drive for them and, uh, and kind of doing – some of the uh, team alliance uh, program that, that you see through through many teams nowadays, and I uh, was fortunate enough to go over there and have some really good runs with uh, with Bob Osborne on the top of the box, and uh, got a got a win at Pocono, right? And actually made the the playoffs, which was pretty neat. And uh, you know, I know we did it a, a 
unorthodox way, but it was it was cool to to do that in our first season and um, you know kind of do it as a as a as an underdog through all of that. Um, you know, we've had splashes of, of really good runs through through the last many years, and and we've been close in a lot of races. Um, you know, just trying to find consistency and and really find a a home base to land and and build from. Um, you know, I think that something that sticks out to me is it's always difficult to go two or three years and, and make a, a complete change and, and try and build that chemistry back up and, and build that comfort or, or that uh, confidence in in everybody to be able to go have that success. It's so hard to do that instantly. So, um, you know, it's always taken a, a little bit of time to get that back going and, uh, and always with a little bit of uncertainty of what next year may bring. And I think that you know, feel feel good about where we're at at RFK right now. Uh, it's the the team that I started my professional career with. Uh, it, it's a place where uh, I've worked in the shop. I, I know most of the people throughout. Uh, you know, volunteered over at, at pit practice over here. So it, it's a place that I've put in a lot of effort. I've seen a lot of work go into it through through everybody. I've seen growth through through most of the employees there, and I feel like it's a place that that I can finish my career at as I've always envisioned when I signed up what it was 12 10 or 12 years 12 years ago so uh you know it, it is cool now to have that uh that stability and that thought process that this is something we got to build towards a really long term and and keep our heads down and get after so there's a lot of potential here uh a ton of potential and I think with Brad coming in it's really um it's opened a lot of people's eyes and it's made them see, uh, see some differences. And, and it's gotten a lot of, a lot of people excited. Um, you know, he's, he's brought an energy that has been really good. And, and like I said earlier, he reminds me a ton of Jack. Um, but, but he is in, in every single uh, piece that, that goes on this race car, he's, he's involved and, and he's in it. And I think that that's going to, to help lead us towards, uh, towards even more success. So, I think there's a, a ton of ton of possibilities over here right now. I think that this is uh, this last weekend was a good good splash and a good start, but we're gonna keep building on it and we're gonna keep making it better. Thank you. Thank right, you. Chris, I've got two more in queue here, so let's get these two out and then we'll let you go. Let's start with David Hoffman. Go ahead, David. Hey, thank you. Uh, so, Chris, how do you feel the next gen car is gonna be, especially at Darlington, where it's already difficult as is. Yeah, it's difficult every week, right? Um, and Darlington's never been accused of being an easy track, so uh, there is that. But, um, you know, I think that uh, at the beginning of the year, we, we may have been thinking of Darlington with, uh, with a little bit more nerves, knowing that, uh, you know, simple wall impacts were, were really tweaking tow links and uh, wrecking race cars. And I think we've moved past some of those, um, those issues. And so... Uh, where I'm sitting here wondering right now is we've we've seen the composite bodies and the durability of the Xfinity cars um, kind of make heroes out of out of some drivers that uh, with with a lot of aggression that uh, would have paid a, a a pretty big consequence in years past. Uh, I feel like we're to a point now with the durability of our cars uh, and with the 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 bodies the way they are. I think that. Uh, there's probably less penalty for being aggressive at Darlington. And so, uh, you know, the stripe is something we, we always talk about when we go there, uh, but it's recently cut tires down um, consistently. It's just body tolerance has got so tight. Um, sorry about that. Fresh. Um, body tolerances were, were just so tight. Uh, you, you hit the fence, you, you knock – knock fender in on tire, you cut it down, you're done, um, or you're, you're playing catch up the rest of the day. So uh, that's the difficult part is, is judging where we're going to be there, uh, judging what dirty air is going to be like. Uh, I think that this car has been significantly better running side by side. Uh, we have not had the, the big air loose moments. I think Dover showed a lot of that on restarts where uh, the bottom does not get that, uh, that loss of side force and that major penalty uh, coming through one and two and, and even three and four on restarts. I think that that's going to come into play at Darlington as well. Uh, but the car is still very sensitive front to rear. And so uh, that, that arrow push uh, when you're getting in, when you're getting in line, uh, that's going to be tough to overcome. So 
there's a handful of things that aren't quite known and then we have some questions on. I think it's going to be a, a fun race car to drive there. I think now that the the turn two bumps have, have been smoothed out and repaved and, and are much better there, um, I think that's a good thing for this car as we've seen the bumps be a, a real big trouble area for it. So I think that part is, has been addressed to the point where we won't be thinking about that as our, our major concern. It's, um, I guess at the end of the day, it's going to be about like every week. <laughs> We're going into it with a whole lot more questions than, uh, than we have answers. And uh, we're just going to go go figure it out as we, we get on track and start making laps. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Let's close it out with Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. You get the last question. Thank you, Chris. Got a couple. Um, hey, obviously this weekend, the throwback car is for a throwback to a Matt Kenseth scheme. And I'm just curious, first of all, any particular experiences or memories um interactions with Matt I know not necessarily crisscrossed for all, uh, at, at all times uh, especially with Roush but I didn't know if anything kind of comes up in terms of memories or experiences with Matt uh, throughout your career yeah there's a there's a handful that weren't really directly from uh from the the cup racetrack um you know we got to uh uh when I was running legends cars at the summer shootout we got to uh, get the opportunity to to get uh, Ross Kenseth in um, in our, our other legends car for the shootout. And so uh, I do remember Matt coming in and hanging out with us then and uh, before I was really involved with Roush any. And that was just through uh, friendship with, uh, with with David Reagan uh, as he was over at Roush at the time. And so uh, it was a, a cool uh, a cool moment for us as, as a kid, just trying to, to get into the, to the racing world for him to come out and hang out as a, as a normal person and get to hang out with Ross a little bit. And, uh, it poured, uh, that weekend. So it was not the most ideal weekends, but, uh, fast forward, um, up to 2011. Uh, and it was when I was running ARCA, we were getting ready for, uh, for Salem race weekend. Um, uh, and, um, that's when I got a, got a call to come run my first Xfinity race at Richmond. And uh, it was very last second. Uh, Trevor, uh, Trevor Bain was the, the driver. He got uh, sick that weekend and so got called to sub in and uh, got to Richmond, got all our stuff filled out, went and ran that race. And then it was the, man, this is going to be tough. I got to get all the way over to Salem now for our race tomorrow. And um, and I remember that, that I don't know if it was uh, – Matt offering or if riser Robbie riser begging but uh, I did uh did get to, to take Matt's plane I was the only person on uh on his plane uh, I was the first time I've ever been in any kind of uh, uh nice private aircraft like that and uh and he was really uh was nice enough to to get me over to Salem uh so that I could get some rest get ready for the race weekend and uh and get after it as we were racing for uh, for a championship that year so uh Matt was, was really good to me early on when he probably hardly knew who I was uh, and then enjoyed being able to, uh, to have some of those conversations with him during those times. Um, it's pretty cool to, to have his, uh, his paint scheme on the car, one of the more iconic paint schemes on board of our, our 17 Mustang. Uh, I did, uh, it, it did not go over so well with some of the crew um, as, uh, as we've had uh, one, one of our guys say that, you know, it's not good when our throwback is a car that I used to work on. He's like, that, that just makes you feel old. Uh, so um, I don't know if it's his favorite that, that we've run so far, but it is a, a really sharp looking race car. We're really looking forward to, uh, to get it out on track with Socios on board and uh, the opportunity that they presented, not only us, but, but us and the, the six car with uh, opportunity for the fans to vote on their, favorite schemes out of a, a certain handful and this is the one that, that they chose and that we get to uh to go out and, and try and win with i also want to ask you uh so far this season chevrolet's won seven of the first 11 races um some cases maybe circumstances have kind of helped push that number up i understand that you certainly got a race around a lot of the top chevy cars this past weekend uh i think you were the top four most of the most of the race um I, i'm just curious you know, what do you see out of the, some of these Chevy cars or what is it they're able to do that that has allowed Chevy to, to win a little bit more often? Or is it, I mean, it seems like it's a little bit more than just circumstances in every case. From, from your perspective, what do you see from the driver's seat of, of things that they're able to do that everybody's trying to catch up to, I guess, at this point? 
Yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, it, at the end of the day, seven out of, you said seven out of 11, that, that's not really, you can't chalk it up just to circumstances, right? Um, there's uh, there's speed there. So it's definitely something that uh, we're all chasing. Uh, I don't know that I have the answers for you on, on what it is. Um, if I could tell you, we'd, we'd probably be working on it right now and uh, more aggressively. But uh, I know that we're working really hard from the Ford camp to uh, to put fast race cars on, on a track. I think we've had, um, you know, you go back to all the way to Daytona and had uh, some awesome speed working together there. And uh, and I think we had that potential at Talladega and, and, and we got most of our fleet of Fords wiped out uh, by the end of, was it the first stage? So uh, didn't really have the opportunity to show that, but uh, again, you're, you're right. There's been a lot of speed there. We're all, working on it and, and trying to find it. And um, if, if you get an answer from somebody, let us know so that we can get after it. But uh, we've had some, some really good Ford Mustangs on track and we've had head speed. We got to put it all together. I know that, that Doug and, and the entire Roush Yates engine shop are working really hard to provide us with, with excellent horsepower. That's, that's been completely reliable, uh, which has been a big part and a big unknown with this car as well as, as we've, we've seen some really big temperature spikes at, a lot of these racetracks where we wouldn't typically. So a lot of work's going into it. Uh, we're getting after it. I, I don't, I don't have a good answer for you yet, uh, but, but we're not quitting or, or we're not sitting stagnant right now. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome.